Super Mario Bros. 3, the sequel everyone was waiting for, the game that many people call their favorite Mario game. With better graphics and cutscenes, and the addition of minigames and an entire overworld, the game was an exciting sequel. Among all these improvements, one thing that's always stood out to me was the quality of the music in this game compared to the past entries, and more specifically, the amount of different styles Koji Kondo was able to fit into the game's soundtrack. Comparing the Mario 3 soundtrack to the original Super Mario Bros, which only has four level themes, Starman theme, and a variety of death and victory fanfares. On the other hand, Super Mario Bros 3 has eight world map themes, various minigame themes from Toad's House to Battling Hammer Bros, and boss battle music. Along with updated death and victory fanfares. Not only did the art style get drastically updated, but the music for each themed world matches its unique feeling. From the bluesy tracks of the pipe maze of World 7, to the bright and uplifting qualities of World 1 Grasslands, and the dreary repetitive tones of the Darkland of World 8. These all give fantastic atmospheres to the world around you as the player unlocks and explores more parts of the overworld, creating a more immersive game as the player feels more connected to each world's individual style. Kondo was clearly influenced by many genres while writing these tracks. Although he was merely making music for a game, these styles really cut through. One big change from the original Mario to Super Mario Bros. 3 was the use of the Delta Modulation Channel to create more percussion sound effects and samples. Instead of only using the Noise Channel, having both in full effect allowed for creating percussion sounds underneath all these wonderful melodies and allowing for more defined drum sounds including tippany, woodblock, and timbale. The NES has five sound channels for composers to work with. The first two are pulse wave channels, or square waves, which are usually used for melodies. The third channel is the triangle wave and is most frequently used for bass lines in NES music. The fourth channel is the noise channel and is primarily used for percussive sounds, kind of similar to static on your TV. And the fifth and last channel was the sample channel, or the DPCM which was often used for extra percussive sounds, like in Super Mario Bros. 3. These samples took up a lot of memory on NES cards, so most of the time they opted out of using the 5th channel, which is why the 5th channel is absent in some other games, like Super Mario Bros. and The Legend of Zelda. Kondo uses all these different techniques on the World Map 5 Skyland. The reggae influence on this track really stands out to me. The piece starts with a timbale roll into two quarter notes before the main melody enters, setting a nice island theme. With the eighth note bass line grooving in the background and the synth-like hits on two and four, the characteristics of reggae really come out, at least for what could be done with only five possible channels of audio. A perfect example of these characteristics can be heard in 5446 was my number by Toots and the Maytals. You hear the driving bass going in and the hits on 2 and 4 and even the timbale rolls. Although Kondo's version feels a little square compared to Toots, it's not bad for only working with only 5 channels and a bunch of waves. Another example of Kondo's vast influences can be heard on the airship theme. The A section of this piece resembles Gustav Holst's opening of Mars from his Planet Suite which premiered in 1918 and is still wildly popular to this day. The repeated triplet drum figure in the airship theme almost follows the same pattern of the string section at the beginning of Mars, heard here. The melody also follows the same pattern as Holst's Mars with the interval of a fifth going up and then down by one semitone. The driving drum track has some similarities to Holst's Mars, but the melody is almost identical. Kondo was also heavily influenced by jazz, which can be heard in a few places in Super Mario Bros. 3. His theme for World Map 7, along with Spade Bonus, or the minigame house, these influence can clearly be heard in them. The easiest example of this is the minigame house theme which only has a chromatic walking bass line and a swung drum pattern, which fits perfectly with the minigame as you spin and take your chances of winning some bonuses. In World Map 7, the short synth melody exclusively stays over a vamp of C minor and only uses the C blue scale or the C minor pentatonic scale. The swung drum pattern in the background fits perfectly. 
Kondo uses these simple musical tropes to convey actual genres of music that people have most likely heard at some point. Kondo was able to build off his previous experience and push the ideas of what music could be in a video game. Not only did he build upon his older themes, but he created a diverse list of tracks that developed throughout the game. Super Mario Bros. 3 is one of my favorite games and diving deeper in the music only makes it better. Thanks for watching guys, this was one of the first times I've done a video like this. If you have any feedback, please let me know, thanks.